Hi, welcome to this new video in the series on Bluetooth Low Energy Technology. My name is Mohamed Afani, and in today's video, we'll be covering the topic of Bluetooth 5 and its role in the Internet of Things, or IoT. Some of the topics we'll address in this video include the role of Bluetooth 5 in the Internet of Things applications, the features introduced in Bluetooth 5 that facilitate new IoT applications, and finally, we'll compare BLE and Bluetooth 5 to other similar low-power technologies in the IoT space. Bluetooth Low Energy was introduced back in 2010 in Bluetooth version 4.0. It targeted applications that involve connecting sensors and devices with low bandwidth requirements to achieve the longest battery life. Now, Bluetooth 5 takes it even further. It focuses on broadening the range of IoT applications that can utilize Bluetooth Low Energy. It brought us features such as twice the speed, four times the range, and eight times the advertising capacity of previous versions of Bluetooth Low Energy. The Bluetooth spec covers both BLE and Bluetooth Classic, so it's important to know which features apply to BLE and which do not. Most of the features introduced in Bluetooth 5 are focused on Bluetooth Low Energy. Some of the most important ones include twice the speed, four times the range, eight times the advertising capacity, and improved coexistence with other wireless technologies. Keep in mind that you can't achieve both the high speed and the long range at the same time. In fact, you will sacrifice one for the other. Another important fact is that using the higher speed mode will allow you to lower the power consumption of your device, since the radio is on for shorter periods of time. Whereas using the longer range mode, the power consumption will go up and the data rate will be slower. Let's get into each of these features in a bit more detail. We'll be using the Elisys Bluetooth Tracker to better explain some of these features. Let's take a look at how Bluetooth 5 achieves double the speed and four times the range. It does so by the addition of two new phis, where phi means the physical layer or the radio component of the device. Originally, we had the 1 megabit phi, which existed in versions 4.0 up to 4.2 and included in 5 and beyond as well. However, with Bluetooth 5, there were two additional phis introduced. Those are the 2 megabit phi, which achieves the higher speed of up to 2 megabits per second data rate, and the coded phi, which achieves a longer range, up to four times the original range. Here's an example showing two devices connected with each other. In this case, we're looking at a capture that was captured using the LSS Bluetooth tracker device. Here we can see that the two devices connected with each other over the 1 megabit phi. If we look at the connection indication packet and take a look at the details pane, we can see that the phi used under the link layer was the 1 megabit phi. After that, the master is sending a symbol rate change message to the slave, indicating which phi it wants to update. So in this case, the master is sending a phi request requesting that the transmit use 2 megabit as well as the receive. The slave responds with a phi response message indicating that it can support any of the phis on both the transmit and receive. Based on that, the master sends a phi update message indicating the phis that get used between the master and the slave. In this case here, we can see that the direction going from the master to the slave, we should use the 2 megabit phi and slave to master also using the 2 megabit phi. Now this does not necessarily get applied directly and immediately. In fact, there's an instant value that indicates which packet going forward the phi update will apply. So in this case we have the instant value of 9, which means it's 9 packets since the beginning of the connection, and from here it's 6 packets going forward. So if we look at the next empty packets we can see that it's still using the 1 megabit phi. However, if we skip past the 6 messages, and we go to the next packet, we can see that it's using the 2 megabit phi. And in this capture, we can see that there were multiple symbol rate changes. So the same applies to the coded. So the coded is what's used for longer range. This can be used for either direction of the communication between the two devices. The third enhancement we want to cover is the eight times increase in the advertising capacity. This is enabled by advertising extensions, which are a new feature introduced in Bluetooth 5. They allow advertising packets to be sent on the secondary advertisement channels, which are the same as the data channels utilized during a connection. 
the difference between extended advertisements and advertisements sent on the primary channel is that they allow larger payloads, 255 bytes versus 37 bytes, as well as being able to send them on any of the three FIs. Primary advertising packets can only be sent on the 1 megabit FI or the coded FI. A new mode in Bluetooth 5 is a periodic advertising mode. It is really a special case of extended advertisements and allows a scanner device to be synchronized to a broadcaster reading its advertisement data periodically without a connection. This has the potential of lowering power consumption on the scanner side since the radio only needs to wake up at certain times. Here's a simplistic representation of how extended advertisements work. It starts off by the device sending out the primary advertisements which contain information on how to locate in time and frequency the extended advertisements. These extended advertisements are sent out on the secondary advertising channels, which we mentioned earlier. These are the same as the data channels used during a connection. Here we can see a capture of extended advertisement sent by a device in the area. This is captured by the Elisys Bluetooth Tracker, and this is the software that interfaces with the Bluetooth Tracker. Here we see that there are three advertisement packets that get sent before the actual extended advertisement packet is sent. These three advertisement packets are sent on each of the primary advertising channels, 37, 38, and 39. So if we navigate here to the first one and take a look on this side on the date in the details pane, we can see that this is being transmitted over the one megabit by and is also being transmitted on the channel number 37. Along with this, if we look at the payload of that packet, we can see that there's an auxiliary packet pointer. This auxiliary packet pointer allows the scanner devices to find out where the extended advertisements lie within the time space. So for example, this one tells us that the advertisement, the extended advertisement packet will come in on channel number two. It will have an offset of 21 milliseconds from the rece reception of this packet and it will be broadcasted or sent on the 1 megabit FI. If we go down to the next advertisement packet, we can see the same thing, except the auxiliary offset, the time is now less since it's gonna come sooner than before. And the same for the next one. If we look at the extended advertisement packet itself, we can see that this contains actual advertisement data such as the flags, the advertising address, and some raw advertisement data which includes the service UUID and service data. Here are some of the potential IoT applications that can utilize the new features introduced in Bluetooth 5. For example, low quality video streaming over short distances, long distance remote control applications, broadcasts of additional information from beacon devices, and synchronized monitoring of sensor data without the need for a connection. So how does BLE and Bluetooth 5 compare to other technologies in the IoT space? Let's take a look at Zigbee first. Zigbee operates in both the 915 MHz and 2.4 GHz spectrum. It has a maximum data rate of 250 kilobits per second. It fully supports mesh topology and has low power consumption. However, it has no smartphone support. Another technology is Z-Wave. Z-Wave operates in multiple frequencies depending on the region, all below 1 GHz or what's called the sub GHz. It has a maximum data rate of 100 kilobits per second. It also fully supports mesh topology, has low power consumption, but again, it has no smartphone support. Wi-Fi is another technology competing in this space, and is probably the one most people are familiar with. Wi-Fi operates in both the 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz spectrums. The newest Wi-Fi standard has a maximum data rate that can exceed 1 gigabits per second. However, it has limited mesh support and compared to other technologies, it has much higher power consumption. One advantage for Wi-Fi though is that it's fully supported by the majority of smartphones in the market. The last technology we want to look at is Thread. And Thread also operates in the 2.4 GHz spectrum, similar to Zigbee, and has a maximum data rate at 250 kilobits per second. It also fully supports mesh topology and has low power consumption. However, similar to Z-Wave and Zigbee, it is not supported on smartphones. Finally, let's take a look at how BLE or Bluetooth 5 compares to these technologies. 
BLE operates in the 2.4 GHz spectrum, similar to some of the other technologies. But it has up to 2 megabits per second data rate, which is higher than most of the other ones with the exception of Wi-Fi. It also supports mesh with the release of Bluetooth mesh specification back in July of 2017. It has lower power consumption than the other low power wireless technologies as well. And last but not least, it has full smartphone support. In the next video, we'll cover the topic of Bluetooth mesh. We'll go over the basics of Bluetooth mesh, as well as the terminology used, the types of nodes in a Bluetooth mesh network, concept of provisioning in Bluetooth mesh, and finally, security in Bluetooth mesh. To learn more about Elasis, provider of the world's most advanced Bluetooth analyzers, visit elasis.com. Have a need for training or consulting services? Then contact our training partner, Novelbits, at novelbits.io. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learned a little bit more about BLE. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.